Hello, this is Lewis, founder of LabWorks and creator of the Lab SSH toolkit for LabVIEW. In this video, I'm going to explain the various authentication methods in the SSH protocol and how to authenticate an SSH session in LabVIEW using the Lab SSH toolkit. If you're unfamiliar with Lab SSH, it's an SSH toolkit I designed back in 2011. It allows you to automate your SSH terminal as well as transfer files using SCP and SFTP all from LabVIEW. Check out labworks.net slash labssh for more information or to download and try it out for yourself. The authentication methods we'll cover are plain password authentication, public key authentication using a private key file, agent-based authentication, and finally keyboard interactive authentication, also known as challenge response authentication. I should mention that every example in this video pertains to the function newsession.vi, since that is the VI which performs authentication in LabSSH. So let's get to it. First, we'll discuss plain password authentication. This is just what it sounds like. You provide a password which the server checks against your user account. In LabSSH, you must select the password option in the authentication type choice control and enter your password in the password control. Next up is public key authentication from a private key file. Under this authentication scheme, the server requires the client to prove its possession of the private key by requesting a unique signature. This signature is verified by the server by checking it against the corresponding public key, which the server already has. LabSSH requires you to have your private key file on your computer in OpenSSH format. Here's an example of what this key might look like. To authenticate using a private key file in LabSSH, select the public key authentication method and enter the path to where your private key file is found in the private key path control. Additionally, if your private key is protected by a passphrase, you must enter your passphrase in the private key passphrase control. Let's move on to agent-based authentication. In agent authentication, we defer authentication to an agent, which is just a piece of software running on your system which already has access to your private key files. This agent performs the authentication and not LabSSH. The most common agent is Pageant, which is included with the PuTTY suite. To authenticate using an agent in LabSSH, all you need to do is select the agent option in the authentication type choice control. The private key file path is not needed as it is delegated to the agent. It might go without saying, but you should have your agent running and loaded with your private keys before you attempt to authenticate. Let's move on to keyboard interactive authentication, also known as challenge response authentication. In this method, the server issues one or more challenge phrases, each of which demands a correct response from the user. In practice, however, the most common challenge is simply password. This is why many new users confuse keyboard interactive authentication with plain password authentication. How do you know then if your server is using keyboard interactive authentication? Simple. If your PuTTY window displays the message using keyboard interactive authentication, well, you guessed it, your server is using that particular method. To authenticate using keyboard interactive in LabSSH, select the keyboard interactive option in the authentication type choice control. Additionally, you must enter one or more challenge response pairs in the array of challenge response pairs control. How many challenges and responses are expected is entirely dependent on how your server is configured. Now I'd like to touch really quick on how the challenge response pairs work. The challenge field is a partial string that LabSSH attempts to match to the incoming server challenge. LabSSH performs a simple substring search to determine which response string to use. Consider the challenge phrase, enter your password. Here's a list of valid search terms that LabSSH will match against that challenge phrase. 
enter your password with a trailing colon, enter password with a trailing colon, or simply pass or even just the letters D with a trailing colon. All of these are exact matches of a substring contained in the original challenge, and so LabSSH will detect that and respond with the correct response. To summarize, it's just a simple substring search. In this video, you learned how to authenticate an SSH session in LabVIEW using the LabSSH toolkit. I hope you found it useful. Check out labworks.net slash labssh for more information or to try out labssh for yourself. Comment on this video or email us at support at labworks.net if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.